Welcome to the English Language Club. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our hangout. I am Colin Munro, and I'm joined as ever by my very good friend uh, Tony Kulpa. Well, it's nice to be here. Uh, so yeah, we've got a slightly different setup today. Tony's in, not yes. in his usual uh, usual location, so he's uh, joining us by Skype. But he does anyway, normally. <laughs> yes. um, so who have we got with us today, Tony? Oh, we've got, I mean, uh, I'm here in Canada, you're in the UK, but we also have AJ in Monaco, we have Nguyen um, joining us from Vietnam, uh, Lolly Lolly from France, and Gaspar from Brazil, I, I think. Yep. Uh, yep. And we have also have Bal Bal and Murasir here with us today. Um, I also noticed uh, we have we already have six likes before the, the channel actually even started, so that's always fun. <laughs> Great, We also, yep. number one and Sumera just uh, popped in to say oh, hello awesome. too, so... The party started. Awesome, and I think I think all the names I can see now so far are regulars uh, so far, yes. which is great. But I can see there are more people. So if you are joining us for the first time, uh, please let us know in the chat. It'd be great to say hello to you. Um, now, uh, before we go any further, uh, Mudasir had a comment that he made uh, before we even got started, um, and he's saying that he has to go. He says, "Hello, hello, sir. I'm a bit early because I have to leave at ten past." So my question is about the plural form of an adjective. As many people often use, for example, hello dears. Is that right? And then he says, I had a debate with a friend of mine and he'll be waiting today for my answer. So let's try and give him an answer to give to his friend, Tony. Wait, yes. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, the word dear is not being used as an adjective here. Uh, it's being used as a noun. Uh, in general, adjectives in English don't have a plural form. In a lot of languages, they do, but in English, you don't pluralize adjectives. But one of the things about English is that it's just it's really um, flexible. So you can use an adjective as if it were a noun. So when you say "my dear" or you call someone "dear," you're using the word "dear" as if it's a noun. Uh, and in fact, "dear" is a noun because it's commonly used this way. But it's not the only adjective that you can use as if it were a noun. People say, for instance, these are plural examples, um, you know, if you call your, your pet uh, my cutie, uh, <laughs> and if you have many pets, you could call them my cuties uh, because they're, they're cute, uh, or my pretties. Uh, so when you use an adjective as a noun, it follows the rules for nouns. So yeah. the way you pluralize it is the same as you'd pluralize a noun. But adjectives aren't plural in English when they're being used as adjectives. Yeah, so if, if you're using an adjective as an adjective, you won't be making it plural. You, would, you can pluralize the noun that you're describing with the adjective. You can say, I, yes. like, uh, I like happy movies. Um, yes, but, um, but you, not happy as movies. That, no. In a lot of languages, you pluralize the adjective if the noun is plural, but not in English. Great. Yeah. So, Murasir, I so hope that's helpful. Hmm. Yeah. I yeah. hope that's helpful. I hope that will uh, settle the argument you have with your friend. <laughs> um, I love the idea that people are uh, carry, finding questions in their daily lives, talking with their friends, and then bringing them here to be answered on the, on the live stream. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, because we're always here. They know where to find us and when. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. So we've got another question from Lolly Lolly. She says, I can't understand the difference between one. Peter made Mary pour him a drink. And two, Peter had Mary pour him a drink. Could you explain? So those two are very... So made, make someone do it or have someone do it. They're very similar, really, aren't they? And there isn't a lot of difference, although there is, a, there is some difference. I, I mean... They, I, I would, I would say that they are generally similar, but they actually are. They, they mean different things. Hmm. Um, so what, what this is, is these are called causative verbs, which is where you don't act, you don't make the action happen. You're um, causing so, the action to happen. So you're causing someone else. Um, and there are four, I think, main causative verbs in English, and they all mean slightly different things. But generally what they mean is you're not doing it, you're having someone else do it. Yeah. And I think they are let, which means you're just giving someone permission to do it. Mm. Um, have, which means you're giving someone the responsibility to do it. So you're basically saying this is what you're supposed to do, but you're not forcing them. Yeah. Um, there's um, get, 
which is where you are, you're taking it one step further and you're trying to get them to do it. You're trying to convince them to do it. So if you say, you know, I let Mary pour me a drink, you're saying that she, she wanted, wanted to, to and, yeah. you, and you let you, you said that's okay, but you didn't force her. Hmm. You say, I had Mary pour you a drink. Then you're saying, you know, you're tell maybe you tell Mary ahead of time, it's your job to pour the drinks. Yeah. Um, but you're not forcing her. You're not even asking her to. You're just saying this is in, this well, is in your, this is your I think responsibility. A, another example for have or had is like, I had my hair cut. Um, and so I would say that maybe like if somebody offers a service and you then you have them do that service. Yes. Um, if it's a, if it's something then, that they want or not want to do, but they offer. Um, and often had is used with jobs. So you would yeah. say my boss had me do this. It doesn't mean that your boss forced you to do it. It means that your boss told you this is your job. And it's, so um, it's and your responsibility. You took part of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas get. So like I got her to pour me a drink means you're you're tr you're saying please pour me a drink or you know uh, if you pour me a drink now I'll um, pour you a drink later you're trying to convince them made is you forced them to uh, so made mm. is the strongest of those let yeah. means you're just letting them do it had is kind of halfway between letting them to do it and asking them to do it got means you're asking them to do it made means you're forcing them to do it. So mm. that's why these two are very different. Um, had and get are very similar, but made means something very different. Yeah. Sometimes we use it when we don't really mean force, um, but that is what the word means. So that one you want to be you want to be careful about using uh, if you don't really if the person isn't really being forced to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. This, that's an interesting. interesting yeah. Question. Interesting question that one. Yeah. Uh, so Balval says, what are the questions that you guys get asked every day? Like, what day is it? Or how was your weekend? So you mean in a sort of everyday life, every everyday conversation with our friends, not as English teachers. Um, right. So, um, well, um, what are some common conversation questions? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> What's the w We often talk about the weather, especially in the UK. <laughs> Do you talk about the weather right. all the time in Canada? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's it, Talking about the weather is just the default. Uh, if you don't know what else to say, you, you talk about the weather. Because <laughs> yeah. everyone is seeing the same weather as you, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that. It's funny. Hmm. Um, uh, the questions like, how, how was your weekend? Or, um, or how is work going? Yeah. Or do you have um, plans for the this weekend if, if, you're, if it's a yes. Friday and the weekend's coming up? Um, right. So people might ask you, do you have plans? Or they might ask you, what are you doing this weekend? Um, or uh, they might say, ask you how your work is going. How's, how's your job going? How's work going? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could be as simple as how's work, mm, right? Mm. Um, or it could be, what are you guys doing at work these days? Or what is your workload like? Or what are you working right? on? Yes. What are you working on? Mm -hmm. um, people will often ask, how are the kids? Right? Um, how, how are your kids doing if you if you have kids um, uh, people might ask you you know if you're if you're meeting up with someone uh, you know I, I, a question I get asked a lot is what are you reading these days right uh, what books have you read or what interesting movies have yeah. you seen yeah Mo uh, yeah movies is a good one. TV shows or mu yeah. music that kind of thing yeah, yeah. great I hope that's helpful Val Val now, there's a really interesting question after that from AJ. He says, how, as someone who is dyslexic, can I improve my spelling? Uh, my written work is poor in comparison to my spoken vocabulary. Um, so do you have any thoughts on that, Tony? Yes. Um, that is tough. I, I've um, taught a lot of of people who have dyslexia. I personally have dyscalculia, which is the number equivalent of that. And, uh, but I will say this, um, I, I say this to any students I've ever had who are dyslexic. I have dyscalculia, so I write numbers backwards or I read numbers backwards, and I have a degree in math. So mm. the fact that you have, that it, it's harder to overcome certain obstacles does not mean that you can't achieve you know, the highest yes. possible levels uh, of something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so I, I dyslexia affects um, written English in, or it affects spelling. 
but it doesn't affect mm. your your what what really counts as a writer it doesn't affect your imagination you know yes um you know shakespeare wasn't a good writer because his spelling was immaculate you know um so i my opinion is i and i think that dyslexia just sort of um makes a delay in your achieving a certain level okay you can sort of struggle with things when you're later in life but say let's say if a six-year-old has a reading age of of a two-year-old that's quite bad but when you get to be 24 and you have a reading age of 20 that's no big deal <laughs> you know you're still four years yeah. behind but it's, it doesn't matter um so uh, and and then this but dyslexia comes with other skills as well um so i'm not i'm not dyslexic as such but i've always i did always i'm, I'm definitely that end of the spectrum um mm -hmm. and um and i do feel that i because of that i have other other skills i see things in a different way my brain works in a different way um so what i would say is uh try to embrace what what your extra the things that you're good at if if you're dyslexic rather than worrying too much about the things that you're bad at and the great thing about being dyslexic is that all the things you're bad at are things that technology can um help with yes whereas the things that you're good at things like critical um critical thinking and problem solving and being able to sort of step back and look at the big picture of things um rather than be obsessed by the details those are all things that computers can never help with uh, those are things that the things that you know we we need people for so um i think dyslexics are the people who will get replaced by robots last <laughs> so. in answer to your specific question about spelling yes. there are a couple of things that you can do one is yes spell check right um in, in if you get if you're in the habit of writing things out by hand um it, Either you know if you're writing notes or whatever, but if you if you're typing things out or if you write things out by hand and then you as you type them in, a lot of things the spell check will will catch for you. In fact, most word processors will just change the word for you. Uh, what you want to catch though is you want to. Uh, so this is this is true for anybody, regardless of of what your writing style or or if you have difficulties or not. Whenever you write something, you should read it over again to yeah. check it preferably out loud because your brain is better at catching the mistakes now as a dyslexic if what you want to look out for is is kind of minimal pairs like uh the the classic example of brain or the name brian um <laughs> uh so you know if, if there's words where if you switch two letters it, it becomes another real word spell check won't necessarily catch that but if you're dyslexic reading it out loud won't necessarily catch it so what you want to do is you want to specifically think about those words and look for them when you do your writing. Look for those words and, and make sure you double check that you got it right. Um, the other thing is just a more broad and it really will help anyone's spelling is phonics. Uh, learn, learn phonics, learn your, your letter combinations. And yes, that will not work for every single letter. But it are every single word, but it makes a huge difference in spelling most words, and it pretty much the the things that you won't be able to to catch um, phonetically are not are not going to tend to be the ones that are going to give you a hard time as a dyslexic. So phonics and learning which words can can be a word even if you misspell them, and and specifically looking for those when you check your work. Great. Does that so, make sense? Yeah, I think that's great. So we've got a couple of uh, new new names here. I think I just want to say hello to um, Vijay v Vijanti uh, says hello. So hello to you. Um, let us know where you are. That would be great if you're still watching. And uh, Kami Kamis, uh, hello from Egypt. Great. Hello, hello to you. Exciting. Um, yes. So uh, another question here from number one. What is the difference ah, between yes. May and Might? So these are both modal auxiliary verbs. Mm -hmm. um, so hmm, I think may and might, they, they can mean the same thing in, if they you're talking about uh, using them as a modal verb to talk about possibility. I may yes. go to the shops tomorrow. 
I might go to the shops tomorrow. Those two sentences are almost yes. exactly the same. But um, may can also be used as a question. But then it's not about possibility. It's referring to permission. You're you're asking like, for permission. Yes. Are and you allowed? Yeah. Yeah. May I go? May I go home now? May I go out? Or it, um, but I guess that's quite formal though. Normally we would just say, uh, "Can I? Uh, can I go now?" <laughs> or whatever. Um, yes. Um, yeah. So, is that is that does that cover the whole thing, Tony? Or are there other things that uh, you can think of? Um, it does when they mean something different. So you're right. May is also has the context of permission uh, that might mm. doesn't. Um, but when they do have a difference, the difference is is that might is more likely. May means is it possible? So if you say I may go to the grocery store yesterday, but I probably won't. Um, whereas if you, you if you say might, um, it's it's you're considering it. It's may, like somewhere closer to fifty fifty. Uh, like you're not sure whether you will or you won't. Um, whereas may just means it's a possibility. Uh, so usually they mean the same thing. Uh, when they don't, might is more likely than may. That's all I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But honestly, people don't, yeah, people don't use may as much, I think. Uh, as but it's more to. formal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I may go to the grocery store. People, most people would just say, I might go to the grocery store. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We also so, have a few new people showing up. Um, Miriam uh, Tube says, oh, yeah? hey. Uh, Rehan Harris uh, is saying hello from Indonesia. It's exciting. Erica Roca from Brazil. Brazil. Uh, so welcome to uh, all three of you. It's exciting to have you. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, Jorge says, guys, can you list some words that differ from American English and British English, ah. such as apartment versus flat, elevator versus lift, watch TV versus watch la tele? Uh, is that is that American? Uh, but anyway, yeah, the, no, that's a good question. Telly? <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of uh, vocabulary uh, relating to cars is are, yes. is completely different in English and and um, yes. uh, British English and American English. For example, Americans say the hood of a car, whereas in British we say the bonnet, um, and uh, we talk about in, in British English, we talk about the boot, which is, you know, at the back where you can store your suitcases and they call that the trunk in American English. Um, what else? <laughs> um, um, well, a truck in American English is a lorry. Yeah. In British English. Um, yeah. Um, but then we uh, sort of have trucks as well, like a pickup truck. Or, or like right. a big, or a big kind of uh, vehicle used in construction or some kind of mining or something we might refer right. to as a truck. Whereas, yeah, something used for transportation and logistics on the on regular roads, we would we call that a lorry. Um, right. So it's not just every like anything that you would call a trunk in the U.S. or in American English or even Canadian English is called a lorry in British. It's yeah. that uh, big truck. So and some people uh, also call these vans in in American English. Mm. Um, but uh, so, but more commonly, it's called truck. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, some like a, an eighteen wheeler or a, a delivery vehicle, um, something fairly large. Uh, any others for well, for vehicles? If, yeah. If well, actually, are. you also have a category of vehicle which is the minivan. And right um, now, a minivan. Correct me if I'm wrong. That sort of may transports people, right? But it's small. Yeah, it's for families. But it's mm -hmm. so it's larger than a car. But it and it's but it transport pe people, so it's not a van, and it's a different shape than a car. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. we would call that. We do have what we call a mini bus, and a mini bus is usually just a van that's just been repurposed on the inside. Uh, so yes. so you often have like the same, the actual same model of van. One one of the most famous is the Ford Transit. Now a Ford Transit can be a van, but they've also foot make Ford Transit uh, mini buses. Um, yes. But those would not be ready for a family. They're probably bigger than what you no. call a minivan. A minibus would be... We call, like to, for, we call them passenger vans. A minibus is, is something a little bit different, like a, a specific kind of passenger van in, mm. in the US, like um, a Volkswagen bus. Uh, it's called a minibus. Oh, is um, it? Well, you wouldn't call that a bus. The, well, we, yeah. We, those Volkswagen, those old traditional types, we could, they, they would be camper vans. That's, the, that's what they really are, because they're not just designed to take people transport but you actually sleep in them 
Right. Um, what I'm talking um, about is so a minibus. So there's some different terms. Mm. Right. But that that's the only thing that would be called a minibus in the U.S., really, that I can think of. Yeah. Um, whereas those would be called passenger vans, like yeah. a, a van that's been repurposed to, to carry people. Yeah. Um, whereas a minivan is more for a family. It usually holds like five to seven people, yeah. whereas a passenger van, uh, what you would call a minibus, holds like 12 to 15. Mm. That would be an interesting yeah. video uh, to do vocabulary re- relating to cars and different types of cars in the U- US and the UK. But the question was just about different vocabulary between American and English, not just about cars. So there, there um, are some other ones. We, we talk about uh, sidewalk versus pavement yep. a lot. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, generally speaking, the American English is more literal, more like a literal description of what what you have, like sidewalk. It's where you walk and it's by the side of the road. Mm-hmm. Um, a trunk, a minivan. It's like a passenger van, except smaller, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's actually a brilliant um, comedian, or a brilliant, a brilliant uh, bit that he does. He's called Michael McIntyre. If you search for Michael McIntyre, American English, you'll find him talking about uh, some of the different words. Uh, between British and American English, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. <laughs> um, yes, one of the, and one of these because another thing he says is literal. You talk about if I just say your glasses, do you know what I'm talking about, or would you normally say your eyeglasses? I would not say eyeglasses. You would not. I mean, people know what it people know what it means here, but people don't say it. That's funny because eyeglasses. That's they one say of the, glasses. Yeah, that's one of the things he points he picks up. He says. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't. We I don't know any. Yeah. The only people I, who I know who call who, who say eyeglasses are are foreign to North America. Hmm. They, they didn't grow up here. So okay, yeah, um, um, yeah, right. Well, that's... also some of these things change. So for mm. instance, if you visit the U.S. and you visit a place like Boston or San Francisco um, or like Houston, you're going to pick up terminology that uh, is not really used anywhere else in the country. Uh, so yeah. same uh, in the UK. Yeah, but, yes, absolutely. Um, and you, I mean, you can easily go. You can visit someplace in the U.S. Probably not with an international airport, <laughs> but there are places in the U.S. where you wouldn't even recognize um, some of the the words that they're saying because they are heavily influenced by, say, Spanish or French or um, or some other dialect. Hmm. Uh, there's a, there's quite a few of these. I, I'm interested about the telly thing. Um, there's a it's a bit of a uh, joke, not joke, but a, it's a, it was something, it's a, it's a stereotype, I guess, in the U.S. that, that British people say the telly. Uh, yeah. How common is that? Oh, that's very that's common. That's the norm? Yeah. Um, or, or not, not the telly, just telly. I'm watching telly. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, it's, it's. But a, you spell that T-E-L-L-Y, right? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yes. That's how I've seen it written. Yeah, that's how we would write it. But it's not the kind of word that we generally write. Because it's quite informal and colloquial, so we don't. Yeah. We're normally just using it in speech and very, very informally. Um, right. It shows up in novels a lot. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Jorge brings up the uh, the example of um, in America or Canada they say "Merry Christmas," um, and in British uh, "Happy Christmas." Um, well, you you can say because you got Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So if you say Happy Christmas, it doesn't sound right to say, a, say Merry, a Merry a New happy. Year. Yeah. So no, we're the same. I think there's we're some say, bleed over. I think if that. if you're just referring to if you're just going to say Happy Christmas, you can say Happy Christmas or Merry Christmas. But if you're going right. to say talk about New Year as well, then you have to say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> And uh, people free, increasingly in, in um, the U.S. and even more so in Canada say happy holidays mm-hmm. uh, as well. Yeah. Now, so it, that, it's not a question that you've asked, but it's an interesting thing. What, what is the difference between happy and merry? Oh, there isn't. Like uh, the merry, merry is, is an, a very archaic word for happy, um, except that it has some interesting historical uh, connections it's more like party happy than yeah. feel good happy. Yeah. Uh, well, I yeah. think I do think it's different. I think because we often talk about merry as being like not quite drunk, but, you know. Yes. Uh, so exactly. you, you can make That's yourself. A, there's a bit of a euphemism there. Yeah. 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 You can yeah. make yourself merry by drinking some alcohol, uh, but you can't make yourself happy by drinking alcohol. 
Happiness, um, alco- drinking oh. alcohol is borrowing happiness from tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can, I can definitely see that. Actually, here's a, um, there are also, um, and I have one more I want to ask. What do you call the stuff that roads are made of in, in the UK? Well, it depends on the road, um, but right, yeah. um, most roads we would say are called are made of tarmac, which is right. um, which I guess is also known as asphalt, or are they technically different things? Well, so uh, that's that's interesting um, because uh, the words tarmac, bitumen, and asphalt or asphalt are different things. But uh, so, for instance, in 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 Canada, they call that pretty much all the things, anything that the road is made of, uh, they call it asphalt. In fact, they might call the part of the road um, that is not the sidewalks the asphalt. Um, whereas in the in the U.S., that's usually called the pavement. Um, and in fact, so much so that it's idiomatic, like um, hammering the pavement means you know getting out there and walking a lot, uh, this kind of thing. Um, but I mean, tech, tech, science, in science, like these are all different terms. Uh, they they mean different things. They they're different materials. But uh, they've come to be used for the the whole uh, kind of category. So tarmac is the is the British not not bitumen because I've heard bitumen yeah we as use well. the word tarmac a lot um, yeah but I guess technically it, it depends on what, if you're in the context of construction then mm-hmm. it, those differences really matter. I suppose, but from everyday yes. everyday Most life, time, no, um, yeah, exactly. it doesn't really matter. It's it's a, it's pretty typical that, that this will happen. That uh, um, one word uh, that really only refers to to like something very specific gets used for the whole category, like Xerox. Yeah. We we Xerox things. Um, you see, to make, we don't make copies of them. We don't Xerox uh, things. Yes. We photocopy and, things. <laughs> and and what's happening is that this uh, twenty years ago, Xerox was the word. Mm. that was used um, because they were the main company. And that's not really anymore. But if you still yeah. hear a lot of people talk about Xeroxing thing, nowadays it is mostly just copy or occasionally photocopy. Yeah. Um, because yeah. So, so certain brands become verbs, like Google. Yes. I heard right. somebody say, and, you know, go to your favorite search engine, whether that's Bing or um, Yahoo, and Google this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, so now, that's, that's uh, do you do you there. know do you know what sellotape is? Um, is that uh, uh, like cellophane tape? Yeah. Or is yeah. That, well, sellotape um, is, is a specific brand. Paper? It's a specific brand of tape. So you would call it Scotch tape, I think. Scotch tape. Well, is, that's the brand. Again, yeah, that's the brand. But you use the brand to refer to the thing, regardless of whether it is Scotch tape, right? It could be another brand, right. but you still you still but, call it Scotch tape. Yes, but cellophane isn't a brand. That's the actual no. name of the material. No, but sellotape, yeah. sellotape is a brand. Right. So do you call all cellophane sellotape? All, like, um... Okay, okay so here's the thing. Cellophane, cellophane refers to an entire kind of plastic. Yeah. Scotch tape in the U.S. refers to a tape made out of that kind of plastic. With, which, uh, is stick, tape, which is really. sticky on one side. Yes, sticky on one side. Yes. Yeah, so but, uh, and in, 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 in British English, plastic. that's sellotape. Um, oh, yes, right. But not cellophane. Yeah. Cellophane can be, is different, it's broader. But again, scotch tape is not something that's used as often now as it used to. It? Um, clear tape is much more common mm. uh, than it used to be, uh, rather than saying scotch tape. In mm. fact, I, I can't remember the last time I even saw scotch tape in a store, but that mm. may be because it's not, it, I don't know if it's even... If they sell that brand in Canada, I don't know. Mm. I would think they do, but I don't know. It does sometimes get referred to as sticky back plastic, if you want to be yes. d- d- descriptive. Uh, they used to say that on but the again, BBC, because the BBC is not allowed to promote brands. So yes. um, they would, to avoid using a brand name, they would call it sticky back plastic instead of sellotape. But again, it doesn't have to be a brand name. Like again, um, no. Pavement is anything, anything hard you put on the ground. You can tile, you can pave things in brick, you can pave things using uh, concrete, you can pave things using, uh, um, uh, probably you wouldn't consider gravel pavement, but you know, we, we've, we specifically in the US refer to pavement as what roads are made of. Um, in, um, asphalt is a very specific material, but in, in Canada they just refer to, 
to what roads are made of out of asphalt. Um, tarmac and bitumen are specific, like chemicals, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. but you use them to refer to a large class of things. Cellophane, a lot of people call use the word cellophane to refer to plastic that you wrap your food in. But again, yeah. cellophane is is a is a um, broad category. So so oftentimes, like one, the name of the most popular thing in a category will come to be used for the whole category, whether it's a brand name or not. Yeah. But sometimes the other is true, like the, the name for an entire category, like pavement, just gets used for one specific thing. Yeah. Now, yeah. we do have some more questions, so I think we should, yes, m we some, we should some move on. We should move on. There's only so much time we can spend talking about cellophane. Um, so uh, Valeria says, uh, hello from Israel. I have a question, please. I do not understand why um, it is used. Let's get started in the past when you're actually talking about the future. Thank you very much. Let's get started. So started, yes. you're, you're referring to started being in the past tense form because it has the ED. Um, and you're right. So that, that, is the, that is the past form of the verb. But the sentence... The past participle. Yes, the past participle. The sentence is not in the past tense because mm. that is not the main verb of the sentence. That, uh, yes. The main verb of the sentence is get. Uh, and in this and that's context, one of those causative verbs, right? It's it's like we were talking about. It's like we're going to you know, we're going to make this happen, as yeah. opposed to we're we're doing the action now. Yes. That's why it's talking about the future. Yeah, right? and so started yeah. there in the past participle form is actually being used as an adjective. Yes. So it's to say let's let's cause ourselves to to be this adjective which is which is started. Um, so right. I hope that so you're, the action you're taking in the present is making yourself do an action in the future right yeah. so you're you're getting something now you're making yourself um act and the acting that you're going to be doing is starting yeah. yeah and this is one of the one of the interesting uses of the verb get because it's such it's yeah. a very strange verb it has it's used in many it's different ways and doesn't really have its own meaning in a in a way because uh, it's used in so it many to, different ways. It means to cause, really, is what it means. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Cause or, or take. But we, we can use it with an adjective in order to say we want, you know, you can say it's getting dark or I'm getting hungry. Um, mm -hmm. mean, to mean that that's, that adjective is starting to be true. Uh, or, mm -hmm. um, or, or in this case, it's, it's, it's the causative um, expression. So, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, yeah I, hope that's, I hope that's helpful. So yeah, you got you got to be really careful when you are uh, look with tense. You, you know, you you've got to make sure you can identify the you're identifying the main verb main correctly verb. because yes. uh, get yeah start is not the main verb here. Um, now fact, an, verb another tense. thing, just in general here is uh, this is it is a present tense uh, statement, but we often use present tenses to talk about the future a lot. Um, so we we will say you know um, I'm I'm meeting I'm meeting him uh, tomorrow morning like that's a present but we're talking about something in the future so keep 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 your eye out for that that uh, just because something is in the present does not mean that it's not um, talking about the future. Uh -huh. Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so Win says, what is the difference between what happened to you and what happened with you? Which one is more popular? Hmm. What happened to? I think what happened to you is more correct. Um, I can imagine saying it's what happened to you. By far more you. positive. Yeah. Um, or but then but then what happened to you? It is implying that something that you were passive in that. So something happened to you. You didn't do something. Mm. Something happened to you. Um, but what happened with you? It could mean that um you know uh that you did something or that you changed maybe i would think it, it would it would imply over a long period of time like what happened with you you used to be really nice or you used to do you used to be really fit and what happened with you you know <laughs> um, and, I, and i think more pop more commonly instead of what happened with you it, people might say like what's up with you right um hmm. yeah yeah, or, or it might be that you, more common to use it in the third person. So what, rather than saying what happened with you, say, what's with them? 
Yeah, what happened with yeah. what happened with John? He used to right. He used to study hard, and now he's now he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, hope that we missed a couple of questions. I okay, think. Maybe go back? We can go, I want to make sure we got them. Uh, Miriam uh, asked the question: What's the difference between ground and land? Which is an interesting one. Mm. Ground and land. It depends on the context. Well, but yeah, ground. Land is something that you can buy. Um, buy and sell. You buy and sell land. You don't buy and sell. And there's also the land ground. versus water, right? Right. Land versus water. You can land Whereas a plane. Ground, yes, and it's a verb. But you yep. can ground something too. Uh, ground. Gr whereas ground, if you're talking about like a noun, is just whatever's on the whatever's below you, right? Uh, so if someone says get down on the ground, they don't mean go find some dirt somewhere. Uh, it, you can you know, could be on the floor or on the street or on the sidewalk or the pavement or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, whereas land yeah. could refer to like physical earth, dirt, as opposed to over the water, right. or it could refer to like sections of, of the earth's surface. Yeah, yeah, I think that's more thing. Yeah, land as opposed to ground is is yes. is more ref referring to... Um, Real estate. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Though ground can can refer to that in a in a sense as well. Like we're, we're talking, you know, what's the ground? Um, but uh, that's not as that's more specific. Mm. Generally speaking, though, ground is what's underneath you. Uh, we also Balabal asked the question: Are there words that change in meaning when pronounced uh, in a strong or weak form? Uh, their example is some. Um, so. I'm not sure what's the different meanings of some depending on how you pronounce it. Um, some. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well. So, like, you know, is the difference? There were there was some problems, or there were, um, there was uh, how much was how much was there some? I, I'm not sure if there's really that much of a difference other than just mm. emphasis wise. Now, one um, one word that applies here actually, and it's very different. I think this is different in American English and British English. Yes. You know what I'm going to say? Yes. Uh, the word, I think so, yeah. The word quite? Yes. Yeah, so in I think in British English, the word quite, the meaning depends entirely on your tone. Because yes. you could say, um, um, uh, I quite like sausages. And that means you like them. You, if, if you said, I like sausages, that would mean you like them more than you quite like. Quite, I quite like sausages. It means you like them a little bit. Whereas if you say, I quite like sausages, then that means you, mm -hmm. you, you like them even more. Now, that's a bit different in American English, isn't it? Because yeah. quite always means use very. The... Yes. Well, uh, the vast majority of the time. We yeah. don't really use the, the, the first sense you're talking about, you meaning, it, meaning it a little. There are a couple of um, really probably more idioms that obviously just come from the older British usage where mm. quite winds up not not really meaning a lot yeah um, like it means less than Le like you say it's quite right. that movie was quite good but it wasn't yeah quite good right <laughs> yes exactly so it, we don't do that in, in in american english or canadian english uh, if you're using quite in that way it's always going to mean very mm. not less mm. yeah yeah so yeah. that's a sort of answer to pretty, two, two questions uh, we've when had. when brought up uh, pretty as well um, you know, that was yeah. pretty good. Pretty it good. Was pretty good. Pretty good. Right? Yeah. Means, no, nah, it wasn't that good. Whereas, it was pretty good. You know, means, yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it was good. Yep. Um, oh, Lolly Lolly's just given us uh, another uh, uh, super chat. So, thank you very much, Lolly Lolly. Really, really appreciate that. Um, so, Lolly yeah. Lolly's been with us for quite a long time. And, uh, yeah, it's not the first, it's actually only our second super chat ever. And she really? gave us, yeah, yeah, and she gave us the first one as well. So, Oh wow, that's great! So yeah, one of our uh, yeah, really, really, really appreciate you, Lolly. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, if anyone else wants to show their show their appreciation, you're more than welcome. Uh, but tips aren't the only way. You can also uh, become a member of the English Language Club. We do have quite a handful of members. Uh, Gaspar is here. He's one of our members. Um, and if you become a member, then you do get to see some behind the scenes footage. There's a few uh, behind the scenes clips that I've put up. And um, I'm, I'm, I continue to do those uh, as, as well. And, um, and also, if you are a member, you know, get in touch and um, 
I'll I'll prioritize uh, responding to you um, because uh, you know I really appreciate members. Um, but everyone is appreciated as well, even if you you don't yes. want to want to support us. We just we do enjoy being here and helping out. And uh, so yeah, thanks very much. Um, so let's see, we've got any other questions? I'm we, we do. We have several from Nguyen. Yeah. Um, it, play the guitar or play guitar. Oh, hang on. Before we go any further, um, Mariam Tube is saying, please say my name. And she, uh, they, she said that a while ago. So I just wanted to say hello. We Yes, I appreciate you being here as well. Mariam, you're very welcome. Um, thank you for your comments. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, so go ahead. What was Wynn's question? Uh, uh, do you play the guitar or play guitar? And both are both are definitely correct. Uh, it different. Like you might ask, do you play the guitar or uh, do you play guitar? Both so, are both so are true. So do you need the in the, in in there? And I guess in that context, it the, it doesn't really make any difference. It, it. I mean, it's very there's subtle differences in terms of when you could or couldn't use one or the other, but they mean the same thing basically. Mm, mm. Um, playing guitar is is like a. Um, is just the is you know knowing how to play yeah so it's it's pretty much the same yeah also asks is all the day or all day and that's definitely not a the just all day yeah. um the only time you would say the day in that case is in a certain like really like a poetic like all the day long um is a is a line from an old song so you hear that phrase pop up in in things occasionally but no the, the correct thing to say when you're not being poetic is just all day Definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, Hori's got an interesting question. He says, for this question, I've heard people say shoot as a euphemism for, I'm not going to swear, but the same word with i instead of u. Uh, am I right? Do you know some others? Um, yeah, well, that is right. People do often say shoot when they don't want to, when they don't want to swear. They say shoot instead of the other word. Um, and... Uh, any other words like that? Frick. I mean, frick. there are whole classes of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, frick. Uh, um, uh, shoot. Darn. Dang. Uh, um, Basically, take a swear word and just change the golly. Vowel, change the vowel sound. Yeah. <laughs> and it's sort of. Uh, there's. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, golly. Gosh. Gosh. Darn. Uh, it's an old one. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, there's so many. There's so many. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. It's weird, though, isn't it? How the how just changing one sound, even though you're clearly trying to say the other word, but somehow that's more acceptable. <laughs> yeah. I, the same thing that's always bothered me. I I don't like <laughs> using those because yeah, I don't think that they're any different, personally. But yes, they are very common, especially like among teenagers. Um, this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't have. A, I'm not opposed to swearing. Just no, not necessarily. But yeah. if you're going if you're going to swear, I don't see much difference between using the modified form and using the the original form. Personally, yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying not to do it on the on the stream because uh, you you might flag YouTube and it does change mm. the sort of monetization ability. I think you make make it, it it means that if we swear on the stream, it means that less advertisers will want to advertise on us, and then so it will make less money. Not that it makes huge amounts of money anyway. Um, on the ads but and, anyway <laughs> and this is actually something that is is interesting um a lot of times when i when i'm learn to, you know uh know when i know people who are learning other languages for some reason some sometimes the first words that people will learn or that they will ask about are the swear words yeah. I, I i mean i guess it's just because they want to be edgy or, or something but um in general it is a really good idea not to try to use uh uh uh, profanity in another language unless you really know what you're talking about because you don't know how serious it's going to be you don't know how seriously people are going to take it you you might you know uh, yeah. be shooting for one of those words that's not that's kind of like a slight twist and so it's not as bad but, but actually you, might you, really, really, you um, say something really offensive yeah so in general in general you know be careful um using i mean obviously profanity is something you want to be careful about using depending on who you're with anyway mm. but in another language be be twice as as uh, uh you know don't use it unless you really feel like you you ought to be because uh, it's easy to make a mistake in a language you're not as familiar with yeah 
So we've got a question. Uh, so uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Ezra uh, says, what is the difference between below, beneath, and underneath, and under? So lots of prepositions, very similar, similar prepositions. Um, they can all be used to talk about position. Um, so, so we actually had a we had a um, we had this question a, a couple of weeks ago, and um, the answer is that below and under mean the same thing, but they come to English from two different languages. Mm. One comes from Middle English, one comes from German, I believe. I'm not don't remember off the top of my head. So um, they're they're really just that's a, an example in English where you'll get different words that came from different languages, uh, and they've all kind of been incorporated in in the same way. But I think that they do they have found their own niches within usage so to an extent um well between is different between between you know, is you, totally you different. have two yeah, things that's a different word. my my head is between my hands right now um but now my head is below my hand or beneath or underneath or under you could say all all four of those are the same um yeah. but you would use them in different contexts uh, i i think um, like so, there, I think there's like a sixty percent overlap. Uh, yeah, one of them a lot of has more meanings than the other, and I don't remember which one it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Though I'm guessing it's under, but I, I don't know for sure. For example, um, you could yeah, say you could say um, uh, whales live beneath the sea, or whales live under the sea. But you wouldn't but they say don't they live underneath the sea. Exactly, or below the sea, because or it, below the sea. Yeah. So beneath, in that context, when you say under the sea. You mean under the surface of the sea, whereas right. if you say underneath the sea, you would mean like underground, under the ground. Except under you the can sea. say, except you can say under the sea. So really, those are co-locations, mm. um, yeah. and that's the thing about yeah. trying to do prepositions: is prepositions have their meaning, but what governs how they're used is more what words they go with. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Than so or what situations than what they actually mean, and yeah. that's the prepositions are really tricky for that reason. Yeah. They don't you're, they don't follow so much their meaning as their use. Yeah, and people yeah. want rules, and people try to make rules, but they break the rules so much for exactly that reason that you just say. Exactly. So, yeah. now, Marbar also, since we're on the topic of prepositions, asks, "What's the difference between between and among?" And here, this one's a little bit more clear. Among usually means there's more than two. Um, so, like, I'm between my hands, uh, but I could say, you know, my fingers are yeah. all, uh, or my, my thumb is among my fingers, <laughs> right? Um, yes. It's, it's, it's in there with them, as opposed to just right between two things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Normally, that's the major difference. No, yeah, normally when you say between, there's just two things, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, or at least two very different clear uh, uh, spheres. Right. Um, but you could say, you know, it's uh, he's in there hiding between the trees um, or among the trees in this case. In that, so in some cases, they, they can be used mm. uh, um, either one. But most of the time, that's what the difference is. Yeah. Frank Gonzalez says hi from Venezuela. Hello to Venezuela. Hope you're doing well. You're... Uh, now, um, uh, Taki Imam says, may you help me or are you likely to help me? Or may you not help me? Or are you not likely to help me? Are all those sentences correct? Um, well, let's go so, through them. Go on. Well, I mean, um, do, do we want to go through them individually? Because my general, um, what I would say is that they, they're they all grammatically correct, but I don't think any of them mean what you are asking, which is basically, will you help me? Um because yeah. I don't think any of them mean We're, mean we're more likely to say, can you help me? If you want to ask someone for yes. help, can you help me? Um, yes. Can uh, you help me is the is the way to ask for help. Yeah. Right. Not may, not are you likely to. That one, that doesn't even mean. Or you could uh, say, could you help me? Could you yes, help Yes, could you um, help me is also fine. And grammatically, the only difference there is could is the past tense form of can. So you're making it just a little more indirect. Changing, you know, yeah, using that past indirect. tense form is one way to... Um, to be less direct. Um, yes. But um, you could say, may I help you? That's uh, that's something we do often say. Yes. May I help you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, are you likely to help me? That doesn't mean, that means something completely different. That you're talking about it, the, yeah. pos the the probability of, of uh, you helping me. 
not you're not asking for help in that in that question. Right. Um, it's like once you've asked someone for help, if you if you're not sure whether they really will, you say, "Are you likely to help me?" But that's something you would never ask someone if you were asking for help. Yeah. Uh, so I, might I don't say, think any of those four things are something you would would really say. Hmm. Um, may you help say, me? Are we, you likely to help me? We no. we are likely to help you because we like helping people, and that's what we right. do. That's what these uh, live streams are for. But other teachers are less likely to help you because, uh, well, no, teachers are most like are likely to help you, but other people yes. are less likely to help you. So, yes. yeah, I hope that clears that up. Uh, let us know. Let us know if that's helpful. So, um, thank you very much for your explanation, sirs. This is from uh, Win again. It says, uh, sorry, today I had a lot of questions. Much appreciated for your reply. Okay, no, you're very welcome. Uh, we love those questions. That's yes. uh, great. And never, never worry. Like, um, if we, if, if for some reason we have too many questions, or sometimes we have a couple of questions at the end that we don't have time to answer. Yeah. But never worry about asking too many questions. <laughs> Worst case scenario, we won't get time to ask them. But then maybe we'll we'll bring them up uh, in a in a later video if we if we need to. So yeah, we love your questions. Please keep the questions coming. Uh, don't worry about that. You can ask as many as you like. Hmm. So uh, Kenny Coles uh, says here, please can I apply for the bonus if I don't have a post post pay account? So I think you're referring to the membership. Um, mm. So the the membership, unfortunately, because it's all the, at least the membership on YouTube is all administered by YouTube. Um, you have to pay through YouTube and then they will know that you're your account it has the permission to see the behind the scenes videos so there's no way i can um i can do t take payment for that via another method um uh, i did used to do um a thing called coffee i the, some of my videos may still have a link to that where you can effectively buy someone a coffee or, or basically just send send them a tip through paypal um um but so uh, yeah it's i mean i wouldn't you, you know mm -hmm. i wouldn't worry too much uh but yeah i mean you do need to have sort of paypal or, or, or some sort of credit if you've got a credit card which is quite standard uh, across the world you know you should be able to um pay pay either for a membership or um or um buy our course in the future when, when it's ready coming soon um so yeah, if um, yeah, we it's quite standard. Speaking of memberships, Lolly yeah. Lolly has just uh, has just actually become a, a member. So thank you very much, Lolly. That's great. Uh, again, yes. again, you, you've been very generous today. It's one of our most successful live streams today, which is good. Yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I think we skipped over a couple of questions there. Marbar says, "What's the difference between oh between and among?" Yeah, we we we, 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 we covered that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, Okay. Let's we'll see. Ahmed Yamani uh, mm. has the question. Hi, guys. What's the difference between to love on someone or to hate on someone or to love someone or hate someone? Uh, they're saying, I was thinking that you, when you add the preposition on, it sounds less direct, but I don't know. Um, I think that's quite American to say hate on someone. We don't say that so much in British English. Yeah, it's a very specific thing, which unfortunately... <laughs> has gotten a lot of uh, media coverage these days. So you, you, you hear this phrase when you didn't, wouldn't so much. It actually, I would say it's the opposite to when you love on someone. So you can love someone to love on someone means you are doing something to demonstrate it. So uh, this right. is something that little old ladies used to say. Um, they would, you know, uh, give, give kids candy or give them hugs and saying, you know, they like, uh, that was called loving on them. Um, hating on someone, it means, again, you, you don't just hate them, you are doing something about it. You are sending them nasty uh, messages or talking bad about them on Twitter or potentially worse. So it's the opposite. Uh, putting the on on it means it's something that's very direct. You are actually doing it. Um, it also tends to be, especially with hate on, uh, it refers to something that's much more extreme, which that you can talk about something that's more extreme than hating is kind of, but yeah, yeah, that's what it means. Generally speaking, yeah, I don't know. I'll just leave that there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've got one more question here. Thanks. Uh, if someone is covered with a blanket, 
Which is correct. She is under the blanket or underneath the blanket or blanketed. I guess you could say all three, couldn't you? Uh, under the blanket, underneath the blanket, or blanketed. You probably wouldn't... Say, you'd use blanketed if you're talking about probably something other than a blanket. I mean, you could say yeah. she was, you know, they were yeah. blanketed with snow. Yeah, so, um, so blanket is used blanketed metaphorically a, a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could so, say they were blanketed um, in their bed, but again, that's not as and that's not as common. Usually, you use that as a metaphor when you're talking about something other than a blanket. Um, you do need to say the though. You you don't say covered with blanket. It's covered with the blanket, under the blanket, or underneath the blanket. Um, yeah. So you definitely do need the the. But here's Lolly Lolly yeah. taking advantage of their their little uh elc well emoji um, in there in no name. uh no? so yeah so well one of the other the perks that lolly lolly will have now is that there are four sort of custom emojis that she can use in the chat uh and the the actual english language of logo that's that will always appear there next to lolly by uh, ah, yes. standard if, you, if by members and the longer you've been a member that that sort of changes color um but oh, then really? But then there are these four emojis, which are my face, um, um, that she can now use in, in the chat as well, as well as maybe some other ones, which are YouTube specific. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If it, maybe everyone can use those. Um, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Well, great. Yeah. Um, so should we talk about uh, Inside English, the course that we are writing and uh, the progress we've been making? Yes. Because we have made a lot of progress. But it seems, it feels as though the more progress we make, the more work we realize that we have to do. Uh, it's a common problem with yeah. many kinds of projects. So. Yes, yeah. but it does. I do feel like we've made some significant progress. So I think yes. the plan is, gonna, is now that we are going to release the course with, the first, with just the first four modules. Although when it's finished, there will be nine or ten. We have nine, nine or ten planned out, definitely nine. Um, and but we're gonna once we've finished the first four, we're gonna film those. We're gonna uh, put them up and construct the course on the English Language Club website, and and make it for sale, even though it's only half half the course. So we'll probably charge half the price for it if you for the for the people that sign up early. Um, and um, but if you. If you uh, if you sign up for the course, you'll still have access to the the rest of the modules once we when, put them up when they're available. Right? But that's yes. probably not going to be till the new year, um, I think, or maybe before. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Depends on a lot of things. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so the first four modules, hmm. the first module goes over our big ideas that we've talked about a lot, and then the the the, the modules two through four go over each tense and talk about how these big ideas really. Uh, clarify well let's what say what these big ideas are because work. people it may yes. not be people may have forgotten so yes. and, and when we say the big ideas it's, it's essentially a grammar course mostly focusing on tense but really tense is is how everything is structured structure. how all yeah. english is is structured around tense and our key ideas are sort of just a slightly different way of looking at it so first of all uh, it's it's looking at the fact that there's these three structures. You've got positive, negative, and question, which you're probably already aware of. But what we really mm. want to do is emphasize how important they are because yes. they're, they're very consistent, which people mm -hmm. think tense, oh, it's very complicated, I don't, uh, you know, and inconsistent and things. It can get complicated, yes, but there is a logic behind it when you when you focus on the right things. And if you're focusing on the structure of a positive sentence, a negative sentence, or a question, that is very consistent because it's the same for every verb in every tense. Uh, so that's the first key idea. Then the second key idea is how, you know, if I say to most people, how many tenses are there? A lot of people won't know and they'll, they'll struggle to kind of count them out because, well, in reality, there's right. tw there's 12. But there's a there's there's a very easy way to to the better way to think of tense is just two things. You've got mm -hmm. the the time of the action, which is past, present, and future. And then you've got mm -hmm. the type of action, which is simple, continuous, or perfect. And then between mm -hmm. those 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 two groups of three things, you can make the nine you can make nine the first nine tenses. So you yes. can have present simple, present continuous, present perfect, and so on. 
Um, and then the other three are just because you can have ten, um, a tense that is both continuous and perfect at the same time. So that's how you make up the 12 tenses. That's how to remember how many uh, mm -hmm. tenses there are. But it's also helpful to think of tense in the sense of those two questions, those two ideas. What is the time mm -hmm. and what is the type? Mm -hmm. um, so that's our second key idea. And then the third key idea is... Uh... It's just the how important <laughs> those auxiliary verbs are, yes. right? Yes. That we, we are trained to think about the principal part. We're trained to think of the form of the main verb, mm. but actually you can't get all the information you need just from the main verb. But you can get all the information that you need from the auxiliary verb. Um, and so that's what we really like to focus in on. Also, the auxiliary verb tells you a lot of things, and it helps you form the correct tense uh, without having to work. Instead of memorizing, oh, okay, well, in the past perfect, what form do I use? Well, instead, you just look at the, the type of action and the time of action, and you just kind of build your auxiliary verbs from there. Uh, so there's, not, there's no guesswork at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the plan is that within, hopefully within a couple of weeks, um, we'll have that, f that first version of units one to four, which are covering those key ideas and then how they apply to all three, or, 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 uh, all three, or, or, or nine, the first nine tenses. Um, yes, the first nine. Um, so that's going to go live. The course will be available. You'll have the quizzes and questions after it. Um, and then we're going to use that same material just to sort of make some more YouTube videos that, that, will be, that won't be part of the course, but more standalone um and um and then later on the, the later modules which will come out later on will be sort of look comparing the different the tenses comparing the usage um looking at uh, some different types of of questions um and diff yeah different use uh, unusual uses because you can use the continuous present continuous for example for the future to talk about the future things like that the the more abnormal yeah abnormal uses that um but really essentially what we're trying to do is at least especially in the first four modules is just focus on what makes sense so there's a lot yes. of things in that there's a lot of people i'm sure people will watch this and go oh but what about this and what about that you know and it's like yes those things are true you're right but what we're trying to yes. do is focus on what makes sense so that you so that so that people who've said oh tense is so complicated we're trying to, we're trying to make tense make sense um, we really believe that if you understand the core and you understand how all of the pieces connect and how they work together, it makes everything easier to remember, easier to use, easier to learn new things, and easier to keep track of all the exceptions. Yeah. Whereas if you just learn grammar as a list of exceptions, it's just, yeah. it's just too much. And that's, so, but if you and focus that's what I that feel people layer, do. That's what I feel people do. You know, exactly. We learn about one tense, like the present simple. So today's lesson is about the present simple, but then you get into the S form on the third person and it's like, ugh, it's a distraction from what, from what actually makes the, the tense, what the tense is really all about and what actually yeah. tells you that you're using the present simple and why you're using the present simple and when you use it. Um, you know, it's a distraction and, and it's always like that. Every textbook I've ever read will have this tangent on, in almost yes. every module. So we're just trying to strip away those tangents. We call we refer to them as like layers because they get in the layers. way. They get in the way of what's core, what's really important. Um, yeah. So that's what we're trying to do. And hope so hopefully in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to have access to that. Uh, so stay yeah. stay tuned. Um, so yeah, we'll be here again next week. Um, thank you very much for watching if you have been. Uh, especially Lolly Lolly, who's uh, joined and given us a tip. And uh, oh, if you haven't already, give us a give us a thumbs up if you're still watching. And um, yeah, we will see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.